So in our last video, we introduced sort of, again, exploring the idea of building out our own heuristics because when we were dealing with, say, the sliding puzzle problem and moving, say, that two uh, into its correct location, the big issue there was it's not an easy translation uh, to sort of a traditional graph or grid structure. And so we had to use sort of multiple, we explored multiple heuristics, H1 and H2, and said, oh, well, you know, if I took the max of those two, I can potentially generate a good one. But that actually leads into sort of our, our next sort of topic point, which is this idea of an optimization problem. The big idea is, well, you know, again, if heuristics aren't just a magic, super easy translation, where else could they kind of sit? And that's actually, again, looking at this idea of now something known as a configuration rather than a path. Again, a path had a starting point. You traverse some set of things until you reach the goal. Well, we still want to kind of utilize the same algorithms. They seem to do very well in that world. Could we use them here uh, in some sense? And that's where I'm going to introduce a new problem to you, something known as the linear assignment problem. I have five people. P1 is red, P2 is orange, P3 is green, P4 is blue, and P5 is purple. Now, with that in mind, which task should each person do? Oh, well, you see that they're, they're you know, reds right uh, above custodians, so that, you know, just give them what they're next to. All right, we're done. Now, you know, the big idea with the linear assignment problem is each one of those tasks and those people, or whatever terminology or, you know, things you're kind of working off of, each one of them get some associated value. So in our case, red, if red is a server, generates a value of 23. Maybe this is a cost. It's red costs the, the restaurant uh, $23 an hour to uh, be a server. Uh, or it's productivity. Uh, red generates $23 worth of revenue if they are the server. Either one of those comes into play, and our goal is to min max the uh, minimize or maximize that cost or productivity. But the big issue is that as we start to expand, our numbers get bigger on possible configurations. I'm only dealing with five because it's easy for me to make these slides. And so as a consequence, you know, five only has 120 possible configurations if uh, each person can only have one job and only one person can do a job. Uh, all right, fine. Uh, you see that's not hard. You can build uh, an algorithm to do that and just have it solves it within a second. But the problem is what happens as we increase how many people and tasks we have or how many do we, do we have to deal with? How many configurations do we have to deal with when this number gets to like 25? And you can see it gets into a giant number. And so we can't brute force this anymore because yeah, that's gonna take millennia. And this is the exact same problem that you have with password cracking, right? There, are, if someone has 13 characters and there are, you know, you're working, I'm just looking at my keyboard. There's roughly speaking uh, 62 possible characters. If we just do numbers and lower and uppercase characters, no special characters, that's 13 possible, you know, that's 13 letters or characters and 64 possible configurations. You know, 13 to the 64th power, big number. And we're running into that same sort of problem. As we expand this, right, you can see this possible configuration, it's not feasible for us to do a just traditional search. So we have to find out ways. And, you know, it's harder because A star, oh, we, you know, everything that we saw with A star, like there was a distance involved. This one's going to get a little harder because, uh, you know, I can't tell if this is good or bad uh, because I may not know the goal. It may be actually incredibly difficult for me to find the goal. Again, if we're thinking about uh, 25 star uh, configurations or you know, 25, 25 factorial configurations, we can't do that. I, I can't find what the best possible solution is because again, even brute forcing it would take millennia to do. 
And so that's actually sort of where we're going to work off of this idea that each one of those configurations, however we set up, you know, P1 was going to equal uh, the custodian, P2 was the chef, P3 was the bartender, etc. This whole setup with all of those would generate some fitness measure. Or you may remember we saw this. This was the F score in our A star solution. And so at least when we're thinking about this, what we want to do is something known as iterative optimization. And just this nice little thing right here is going to tell us what this allows us to do is not have to deal with a search tree. I don't need to explore all these possible routes and decide which one's the next possible route uh, or the best next possible route to consider. Instead, instead of a search tree, it's much more a simple loop. I just iterate through my search at each sort of cycle. I just say, all right, let's refine our search this loop around, and hopefully that works out. So when we're dealing with the linear assignment problem, you know, you, what you could possibly do with this is you could randomly assign uh, our people to a task. So again, red is the uh, server, orange is the sous chef, uh, green is the head chef or the person who designs out the menu, whatever. Again, we start with some configuration or you could just, you know, linearly assign it. Either one will work. The big idea is we're going to iterate from it later. But what you do with this is once you have your configuration set up, you essentially calculate out your fitness measure. And I'm just, again, being super lazy uh, and saying, oh, well, I'm going to just take wherever these configurations are lined up, add them together, and congratulations, that gave me a 106. My, my fitness value is a 106 done. Okay, well, you know, I need to figure out uh, if this is the best configuration, and how could I do that? Well, again, I can't brute force, or I, I can, but brute forcing will take forever. So what other options do I have at my disposal? And this is where, you know, we'll start with the super simple version. L what if we just randomly generate uh, configurations? Right, you know, we do that first one. We see, you know, red's at the server, orange is the sous chef, green's the the head chef, blue is the custodian, and purple is the bartender. That gives us again that F score of 106. I randomly generate a new configuration. It has a 105. Well, again, I make the the decision: is this better or worse? And uh, well, if it's uh, better, say we're reducing cost. Congratulations, I have a new configuration. Or, you know, I look at the next one and I say, oh, well, you know, it's this configuration and this is the F score for it. Oh, well, you know, again, if we're trying to find a smaller number, uh, that's not a good small number, so we ignore it. But, you know, again, if you're thinking about random, right, random may not lead to any good solutions because, again, it's random. We can't control it. And in fact, that's actually going to be what the next few heuristics are going to look at is can we control, control, I'll put some air quotes on that, random. So to at least start, before we get there, we've already started to see this idea that, again, if I have some initial configuration and I build new ones, are they better or worse? And what we call that is hill climbing. And the entire idea is, well, wherever I'm currently sitting on sort of, in this case, a polynomial curve, uh, or that's more, whatever, on a curve, again, I want to make steps that lead me towards some peak or bottom. Again, trying to think about maximizing our F or minimizing our fitness value. And again, so one way if we're looking to maximize it is, again, if I see steps that would be better, I go towards them. And if I see ones that are uh, worse, I don't. Or I flip it. Again, I'm just dealing with it depends on your problem. So again, what I would do in this situation is I maybe generate 
my moves. And in my case for this, again, since there's so many possible configurations, the only thing I'm going to focus in on is what if I'm just swapping red? Red is the only person that I'm looking at in this first iteration of who to move. Okay, well, we see that, again, I have my 106. I see if I do the swap of red and orange, I get a 105. If I swap uh, red and green, I get a 100. If I swap red and blue, I get 121. And red with purple, I get 93. Right? I, I've generated uh, in characters, built their fitness. Okay, now what? Well, again, it depends on your problem. If I'm looking for uh, something to be maximized, again, I'm, I'm looking at this idea that I wanna pick the child that would be the best next step. So the 121 is the best, best next step. So that's the child I would go to. Minimizing, it's obviously the other way around. But the big idea here is, again, I'm gonna just take this maximizing. What I would do is this new configuration Again, in our loop, remember, think about this a whole iterative optimization process is this big old circle. I say that this configuration, this nice little orange con you know, highlighted one, that's my new configuration, and I'm going to be swapping off of this in the next turn. So I do that, I, I, I take it, and now, again, just only focusing on, on red, red swaps with orange, Red swaps with green, red swaps with blue, red swaps with purple. Done. But um, I, I'm not getting any good children out of this. Uh, all my possible children are worse than I am. What did I do? Am I done? Have I, I reached the peak? Well, not necessarily. You could almost think that what we just did may have been this step. We thought we were here. We thought we were making our moves upward to this giant mountain and we'd get to this peak and we'd be done. But we may find ourselves in this type of situation. Now we're running into a problem because we've sort of created a, a, what we like to call a local maxima. There are no better options uh, that we can work off of. So we're not going to move or we don't dare move anywhere else again because everything's worse than what we are. So we're stuck here. And so again, you have sort of this problem. Uh, I don't want to move to either one of them, but at least for our sake, uh, the big idea that you'll see here is we're not at the global maximum or a global maxima. We may be stuck at this local maxima. And the big idea uh, with these types of problems is when we're trying to brute force them, we can't because again, if it's a 25 factorial or if it's if n is 25, that's 25 factorial. It's impossible for us to figure out all the possible configurations to see this. And so here are the limitations of hill climbing. But in the next video, we'll start to see some of those approaches that we can use uh, that say, well, maybe sometimes it's okay to go down.